Hello and welcome. We are the Sisters of the Holy Fiber. This is episode 11, and my name is Devin, also known as Rambunctious Guy. And I'm Heather, also known as Tiny Kiwi. So, grab your pliers or your files, get busy, and join us while we craft and chat. So, first up is Whips. What are you working on this week? Wait, wait, we have to say... Thank you for coming back if you've watched before, and if you're a new listener, welcome to our show. Okay, what's okay. on our whips? I'm making socks. Hold it up so I can see yes, how... I, I will. I'll... Too anxious. Oh. So, uh, I cast this on last week. I haven't really made my pro- much progress on that, but that's one of my whips. Uh, shall I continue? Go ahead. I usually do everything. Okay. Um, my sashiko is all seamed. I finally finished the sleeves that took forever. And sewed it all together so the seams are done at the bottom. I will give you a close-up of everything in just a minute. Yeah. I know it's kind of hard to see, but... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that looks good. And... Believe it or not, that is the wonder of the mattress sitch because that's the seam. Cool beans. And let's show you another amazing seam. <laughs> <laughs> so here, along the shoulder, you're like, oh, look at that line. That's the line of decreases. That's not the seam. Seam is right here. Super sneaky. Yes. Um, mostly happy with my seaming. I feel like I should have done a little bit more curving on the shoulder up here. It kind of looks a little boxy, but it's done, and I'm not taking it out. As far you tell. as yeah, as far as the fit, the sleeves. Um, when I put it on, it's like mm-hmm. baggy right here. But okay. it does fit in the shoulder, like this part, this part around right here fits. So what that means is the next time I make a sweater, I just have to make sure that my final increases happen like here. Oh, okay. To take out this like extra fabric stuff. Because I do need those stitches for the, sh- the um, shape of the this part of the shoulder, but I just didn't need it down here. So. But I'm not taking it out and re those sleeves because it took me long enough to get through them, and I will wear it. It's yeah. not bad enough that I wouldn't wear it, so I'm um, going to keep going. Live and learn. Yeah, I need to pick up the button band on that, so that's what's left for that. And I need, like, brain cells to do that. And Yeah. Oops. I've just oh. finished steaming it, like, a couple days ago, so it hasn't been sitting for that long. So. Yeah. Uh, I- what else? I think that's all I'm working on. Oh, and my kiwi, I'm still working on the cross stitch. I just don't have it with me. It's not here. Oh, okay. It's in my purse. I, it's such a po- easy, portable project that I tend to put that on my purse. Makes sense. What are you working on? Uh, I just got marker all over myself. I saw that. I went to grab my Sharpie and, oops, the lid is already off. <laughs> I'm just going to wipe this on some handy muslin here. Uh, what am I working on? I don't even know. Um, Fib and Erty, I'm going to have, I looked, I'm going to have to do five rows a day to get done in time. And the rows that get longer and longer? Yeah, and I can barely get one row done a day now. So, oh, that's pretty much not going to happen. But, but it's still good to keep going yeah. on it. Yeah, for sure. And it's really a great go-to project because... I don't have to spend too much brain power on it, so I can take it to knit night, and it's just garter stitch for the most part, as long as I remember to put the increases in. Most of the time I do, but like you saw in a previous podcast, I don't always remember until halfway through the row. But, um, you know, and I can do it on the bus, too. So it's getting done. I'm going to keep working on it until it's done, even if it doesn't get done at the end of the month, which, you know, it probably won't. There's still a chance, a small, ever-dwindling chance. But probably not. 
Uh, what else am I working on? Are you still planning on making another one? Yeah. <laughs> Just not right now. Mm, okay. Just checking. Well, I'm, uh, people were showing me their color affection shawls um, at the new knit group that I just joined. Yeah. Why do you make that face? <laughs> you finish, and then I will tell you why I make that face. No, you have to tell me first. You make me nervous. Because that shawl is gigantic. That's why. They're gigantic. And gigantic. it's so much just knitting. Yeah. So... So much. So. <laughs> I'm just, you, that's all I'm saying. That's why, I mean, and I, I don't know. I think, I think they're neat, but I don't think that the end result is cool enough to justify all that work. Yeah. I like, I like other things better. And yeah. so that's just me, you know, that's my personal opinion. So tell me about the color affections at knit night. Anyway, so I just keep seeing it everywhere. Yeah. Because it's hot in all the knitting groups. Everyone's like, I made ten! And I'm like, you're crazy. Yeah. That's a lot. Uh, I can even get through one. Um, when people first saw, um, this Fib and Nerdy shawl that I'm working on, that's my whip, um, they thought it was the color affection at first because of the striping, I guess. I don't think it has a small section of striping. Anyway, I saw somebody do one with houndstooth, and I thought that was a good idea to break up the knitting a little bit. Um, you know, the color blocks. At least I think it, I think hers was, I might be confusing projects now. I'll have to double check. I haven't seen that shawl of hers in a while, so. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't remember. I'm thinking about it too hard now. Now it won't come. Anyway, what else am I working on this week? Um, I feel like I have a bunch of half-finished projects everywhere. But uh, Well, I'm currently making more buttons to make more rings. Let me see if I can get this fabric. This is some, like, horribly patterned floral fabric from my grandma stash. So I'm going to make a ring out of that because it's, like, bright and garish. Yay! And absolutely fabulous. So um, I went and I... Uh, got some more ring blanks from a different place, and these were still kind of like expensive. I got more in the package, but it's like these are the little chintzy. Look at the shank. They're like the kind that you win at the carnival. I feel like I shouldn't be paying more than a dime a piece mm -hmm. for these, mm -hmm. and I'm definitely paying more than a dime a piece. So I gotta find a better supplier. Um. I really have a feeling that I'm going to have to go online. I hate going online because I'm lazy and I hate waiting for the shipping and dealing with all of that. And dealing with the finances. But if I buy enough of them in one go, then I don't have to bother with it anymore. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to try these, see if they work okay. But I'm really not holding my breath. I'm still working on your earrings. I've got all the parts. I just need to put them together. I'm probably going to be doing that while we're casting today, actually. Um, what else am I working on? I feel like I have a million projects sitting around, but I guess I don't really. I have a million idea things sitting around. <laughs> you know, let's get inspired and leave stuff everywhere. What a mess. Yay. Yay. That was like my life. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I also wanted to, um, uh, decoupage, but I have no idea what or when, or any of the other W words that go into that. So, yeah. But that's that's all I'm technically working on. I'm really trying to focus on that shawl, on my fib and nerdy shawl, when I have uh, spare time. Um, it's just such a slog. It's nothing, you know, exciting to talk about. I don't really... I don't hate it. It's just... There's nothing... Oh, I got to the more garter stitch. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so. I got to the part where I keep knitting. Yeah, pretty much. So, there's that. Yeah. But, um, I have no... I don't think I have any finished objects this week. Unless they were so small that I've already forgotten about them. I really have been doing a lot of little, small, project-y things, and... 
cranking through things. So I'm probably forgetting something, but oh well. What about you? Do you have any finished objects this week? Nope. Moving right along. <laughs> the Lazy Sisters. What about brainy moments? Yes. So my brainy moments today, I um, am working on something with stripes. That's this. So I wanted to talk about jogless striping. So if you knit, um, oh, this looks like it's messed up in the back. You're so funny. You're making the no, sad knitting face. It's not messed up. I just had a tail that was where it shouldn't be. Anyway, uh, da, 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 where was I? <laughs> so jogless stripes. <laughs> if you stripe, if you want stripes in knitting, if you just change the color, you end up with, you know, the if you end up with the row where there was that old color, and then you start the new color where there's that spot oh, yeah. where they meet, where you can definitely see there. And so the, the colors, instead of being lined up, they go kind of wonky. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's a couple of ways to fix that. And this is a blog I've referred to before, um, Tech Knitter. She has a really good... A blog post about the different ways that you can fix that problem. So I'm going to talk about the way that I'm using right now. This particular method um, moves the start of the round one stitch over every time. So, But the basics of it are pretty simple. When you want to start changing colors, you just start knitting with a new color. Then before you finish the round, so the, so you, hmm, here's knitting, okay. So you start going, choo, my new color, and then you go all the way around, because mm -hmm. I'm knitting in the round. And instead of knitting this first stitch that was the new color, you slip it. Right. And then you keep knitting. And then when you're done, then you do the next color uh, one stitch over. So. Oh, really? What it does is that because you slipped that first stitch, it pulls that stitch up a little bit into the next row. So this one, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it close enough to see, but one of them, I the um, new color is too loose, so it's not pulling up enough. And uh, you can still kind of see the jog, but then above it, there's another one where you can't see the jog. So here is the spot where you can kind of see that jog. That stitch was slipped, and it's just a little bit loose. I'm going to pull these stitches over, and that will mm -hmm. help pull it up. But mm -hmm. up here, it looks just like a straight line right? because of this technique. The Tech Knitting blog entry that I'm referring to, she has really good diagrams and really good instructions. So if you're interested in jogless striping in the round, uh, you should definitely check it out. And we'll link yeah. to everything we talk about in our show notes. Yeah, I, um, I've i heard about the slipping before, but I didn't know that you could, um, you know, uh, move the start each time. Right, and because you slipped that stitch, if you kept doing it right there, then you'd end up with these column of slip stitches, which is one way that you can do it, but then it, it does kind of look a little. So if you just move the your starting round over one each time, then that, that column of slip stitches gets moved yeah. down, and it doesn't um, affect yeah. it as much. And because I'm just knitting socks, like it doesn't really matter like where my round right. starts. Like I can just put my heel in wherever I want, so... I wonder if there's an equivalent for doing that in um, crochet. I haven't really looked. Um, and some of the patterns that I've seen for amigurumi, or that I've worked, um, they have kind of weird ways of dealing with the start and finish of a round sometimes. So I wonder, if, I'm just thinking like, because sometimes uh, you want to change a color while you're crocheting the little uh, plushie. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering... Uh, if there's a similar technique that could make it look less, uh, you know, uh, severe, I guess, of a color change. I just haven't Googled it, so I don't know if something like that exists. And I've never cared enough in the projects that I've done to um, really think about it. So if you know, you should leave us a comment. Because we would love yeah. to learn new things. Exactly. 
So let's see. Are you done with your brainy moment? I am done with my brainy moment, yes. Okay. So I thought this week I would share something that I made. Let me show you what it looks like right now while I've got all the pieces together. So this is for metal smithing or jewelry making. Um, but let me take it apart now that you've seen kind of what it looks like. So I inherited a bunch of glass jars. This is just some old jar that was like peanuts or coffee or something. Mm -hmm. um, and I took the top off and I just slipped a little piece of crocheted nonsense in the bottom mm -hmm. so that uh, things won't hit the glass when I put uh, stuff in there. And then these are all my needle files. Well, not all. I put them away <laughs> when I'm not working on them because I don't want them to rest. Um, but I keep them in this jar to keep them handy when I'm working on them because you keep reaching for different ones, uh, you know, different shapes while you're working. And that way it keeps in a hand but not in a, the container that they usually come in. It's just a flappy thing and it's really annoying to put things in and out of it. Mm -hmm. um, so what I did was I saw these at Home Depot. This is a drain nice. for like a bathroom or for your landscaping needs, you know, to uh, drain overflow. So that just, I found one that happens to fit in the jar that, the glass jar that I have so that I can just slip my needle files in and keep them from going everywhere. And then they're still handy, grabbable, and organized, and I can see them because they're in glass. Perfect! These ones don't reach the bottom because these are uh, some of my shorter needle files, but uh, that's I have the fabric in the bottom for some of my longer ones when I'm working with those. So, And I'm actually going to use them today since I'm working with some jump rings and stuff. So, But I like inventing little things to hold my tools like that because all told, this cost me a drain at Home Depot, which is like a buck or something. I don't even know. It was ridiculously cheap. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm... Awesome! Yeah. Really happy with that. But uh, um, that's it for my brainy moment for this week. Get creative, people. You can make your own stuff, so you don't have to pay for expensive things. Yes. Yes. Amen to that. Yep. How about books this week? Do you have any? No. Is Shiny? Where does Shiny go? Oh, we, I skipped it. I, I thought that was later. Sorry. Hey, how about Shiny? <laughs> Just kidding. Just keeping you on your toes. I'm, I don't remember where it's supposed to go, and I don't have notes because I am lazy. So... Nobody cares. Shiny. I have shiny. Yay! Oh, show, show. Okay, so I want to make a blanket. Did I talk about this on the podcast yet? Do you remember? I think a long time ago you were thinking about it, and okay. you hadn't decided yet, or got the yarn. I am going to make a blanket. Yes! I searched through Rav, through D-Stash pages. Mm -hmm. I put through... Um, I put in the advanced search thing, um, like, bulky or super bulky yarn and, like, 2,000 to 3,000 yards. So they had to have that amount listed right. in there. So, and um, not there weren't that many, so it wasn't that hard to go through. Mm -hmm. But I found this one. Uh, she had the posting for gray heathered yarn. And it, she said she buys wool from her local Amish farmer, and he has, like, these Jacob sheep, and she pays to get it cleaned and spun. Okay. And uh, up into yarn. So it's organic. Yay. And it's, you know, like, that crunchy, like, if wool is kind of crunchy. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of crunchy because it's like super woolly. I love mm -hmm. it. And it uh, it changes colors. And she uh, messaged me just to make sure she's like, you know, this is not a commercial yarn. And so it changes colors. And I was like, that's fine. I'm so excited. So <laughs> this one, for example, is lighter than this mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. if they're going to show... Yeah, it shows. The one on the little... A little lighter. Yeah. And then, like, this one. So here's the light one. Here, I'll put it in the same place. Light one and a dark one. Mm-hmm. I don't have a pattern in mind yet. I want to do some swatching and see. 
But I kind of just want to do something simple that I can... Well, I don't, you know me. I say simple, and then I'm like, cables everywhere! Yeah, right? <laughs> so, uh, I'm not really sure, because uh, I like cables. So, one, I, okay, this is why. Because I have two things going around in my head, two ideas. One idea is just like a simple, there's an Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern for a blanket, and I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I'll link to it in the show notes. <laughs> And it's garter stitch and mostly mindless, but I think it would show off the slight differences in the yarn well. Mm -hmm. Then the other thing I've been thinking of is Jared Flood. Is it Jared Flood? I can't remember who designed it. I think it's Jared Flood. He designed a blanket called Umaro. Okay. Umaro is just the dragonfly stitch. Sorry, if it, whoever the designer is, it's just the dragonfly stitch, and that's in, like, four of my stitch dictionaries, and I can figure that out, and I don't need to pay $6. Right. But, uh, I like certain features of the dragonfly stitch, but I wouldn't want that blanket out of that, so I'm trying to find, like, a stitch that's similar, mm -hmm. but that I like more. Okay. So that's another option. Uh, the dragonfly stitch incorporates some twisting. It's not that much, and some I some uh, yarn overs, but mm -hmm. not that much. I like the idea of having a blanket with some yarn overs in it because that is good for aeration. You know, mm -hmm. like uh, if you get too hot, right? And that would be the other reason that a perhaps garter stitch blanket might not be the best idea because that would be, it's kind of like, because garter gets so squishy that right. it's kind of like two blankets almost. And so those are kind of the ideas I'm picking around, but I got um, 2,000 yards of this stuff. Wow. About, like 10 hanks. I had this like big box and I was like, it's my yarn! Yay! So I'm pretty excited and um it's just so pretty. Can you see here? Let me see if I yep. can get it. Put your hand. Yeah. Put your hand in the back of it. Yeah, there you yeah. go. I just had to try and get it. So. Oh, yeah. You see the two different... Yeah. I really like it. Uh, you can just give it to me if you change mind. Yeah. And... Oh, here's another. So this is like a lighter... The lighter one. Let's see if I can get this one up close. Oh, yeah. So they got that heathered look because they took sheet like yarn from one of the um, the like lighter sheep and combined it with some of the darker stuff to get that gray heathered look. So right, it's pretty, so pretty, so, so pretty. just for you, just for me. Yeah. So that's my shiny this week. Cool beans. Very jealous. How much did you say you got of that? 2,000 yards. Okay. Uh, let's see. What did For I... less than $100, folks. Yay. Yay. So jealous. <laughs> so. But then I had to stop me. myself from going into the yarn store today. I was like, no, you just bought yarn. I know you want sock yarn, but maybe you should finish <laughs> a pair of socks before you buy more yarn. Because you've bought a lot of yarn recently, and you're not letting it hold up. You're, like, talking yourself down from the ledge there. I did. I did talk myself down from the ledge. So... That's there could have been even more shiny, but there isn't. Well, that's good and bad. Yes. Exactly. You can justify it now by saying, I have to sh have something to show off for the podcast. Right, right. Yeah, that's a slippery slope. I Blame think. it on you. Yeah, you can do that too. I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, what's next? Book? Um, sh my own shiny. Uh, what do oh, I have? Okay. I already showed the ring blanks that I got. Um, I went a little crazy at the craft store and I got some of these. Um, skull beads. Put your hand. Oh, neat! Is that Jack Skellington? Yeah, kind of. Uh, kind they're, of. Not really, they're not. They're uh, not real Jack Skellington. They're just supposed to be like fake turquoise stuff. Oh, okay. Um, the colors together are kind of hideous. So I I plan to take them apart and use them individually in projects. Uh -huh. I saw. Somebody using these, uh, I think as earrings or something. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Just one skull at the bottom. Um, I kind of wish they weren't such 
crazy colors, like this bright pink one. Like, I love pink and all, but I don't think I have any need for a bright pink skull. We'll see if I can find something to come up with to find a use for all of those, but you know how I am. I'll buy things with that. No idea what I'm going to do with it. And the other thing I got, uh, let me grab it. Oh, sorry. And this is totally kind of an impulse purchase. Okay, totally an impulse purchase. Not even sort of an impulse purchase. But I got some of these little hats at the craft store, too, because they were super cheap. And these are really, really poorly made, like, felt hats. Uh-huh. Um, they're almost actually, like, flocked plastic instead of felt. Um, but I've seen people decorate them cutely to make, like, little Lolita hats and stuff. So I was like, I want to make... One for each of the houses at Hogwarts. Because I'm totally a geek. Oh, so that'd be so cute. So that's what I'm going to do with these guys. And I got one of these to try, too, because I had no idea how... I guess that would be okay. I thought it might look too much like a safety cone on top of my head, because these are so... <laughs> it looks like a witch's hat. Okay. Well, once I decorate it more, it'll be Cross a little... with a safety cone? Yeah. Make it bright orange. And then it really will look like a safety cone. And I got a bigger one, too, because I wasn't sure about the sizing, but I think this might be too big. This is almost getting into real hat size here. Mm -hmm. That's like a child but hat. This one might, I'm probably going to cover in lace and make it a Lolita hat. Um, what do you mean by Lolita hat? Just frilly, girly. It's a whole, um, oh, hold on. It's a whole clothing style. You can Google it if you want to find examples. But trying to define it is uh, an endeavor. <laughs> okay. It's just a fashion type. Okay. Yeah, most uh, The easiest way to describe it is you look kind of like a very frilly doll when you're done. But that doesn't encompass everything that is the Lolita style, so... Is it a oh, Japanese thing? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of like Alice in Wonderland kind of petticoat Meets Lolita. Thing. Huh? Meets Lolita. Yeah. Kind of. I mean, that's just what it's called. It's not necessarily any relation to the book or anything. So, this button backing is giving me a lot of trouble. Anyway, and there's sorry. cat hair all over my knitting, but no one is surprised. Not a person was surprised. <laughs> What's our next segment? I have no idea. Uh, let books. me look. Oh, books. We finally made it to books. Do you have any books? Nope. Books, books. I finished that Mercy Thompson I was reading last week. Uh-huh. Um, and I have I have the last book, but I haven't started it yet. I'm waiting until I um, go back to the coffee shop. I usually read while I'm at the coffee shop. Uh -huh. Um So I haven't started that yet. Okay. Also, I think that's it. For books, for me. What about I Spy? What have you seen this week? I went to the beach okay. on Sunday mm -hmm. because it has been lovely here. I'm sorry, everyone who has snow, but it's wonderful where I live. And I saw a sea lion, which oh. was super cool, swimming out in the ocean. Mm -hmm. And I saw, I don't know what kind of invertebrate it was but it has like if this is the flat part of the stuff then it had like this spiral like a uh, ice cream cone shape but that spiral shell and there was something in there and I had picked it up to look and there was something in there so I kindly put it back oh sorry about that like, buddy oh, let's put you back where you found you and I saw a fish because there's this part where the some kind of stream or something meets the ocean. So there was this fish I could see because it was really shallow in this little part. And um, it was a really big fish and it was black. And I don't know what it was because I'm not a fish person. <laughs> and I saw a snowy egret. Ooh. And... Um, the birds in my backyard have been the same as ever. I have determined that the oak tit mice are the ones that do the tweet 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 
that we heard last time that they were right. so lovely um, demonstrating for us. Uh, because I was out on my porch and they were hopping around in one of the... Um, I have a little ficus out on my porch and they were hopping around in there and doing that. So I was like, oh, it's you guys doing that. So that's Pretty what cute. I have spied this week. What about you? Um, I saw some great blue herons and they were nesting up in um, some palm trees. Mm-hmm. What else did I see? I saw a, a Phoebe did a flyby. <laughs> Pretty close to me. Um, oh, I saw some squirrels. It was so funny because um, I was at the garden that I volunteer at, and one of the other volunteer, the two squirrels were having you know a little fracas, and they were you know, choo choo choo, you know, and throwing each other around and doing their little squirrel things, and and then they ran right by one of the other volunteers, and they were making such a ruckus, and they like were a foot from her, and I was like, oh look at the squirrels, and she's like, huh, what? I like it always amazes me like how. People don't notice what's around them. I just don't understand. Oh, house sparrows. They were super cute and peepy, and, like, one of them was preening himself, and they're so cute when they preen. I love house sparrows. I just want to kind of pick him up and, like, pet his little head. I know. They're so cute. It's really hard to, like, not do that. <laughs> Stop being so cute. Uh, I saw more. Put down the house sparrow. Huh? Put down the house sparrow. I, I'll be like... So cute. <laughs> uh, I saw more red tails. There was a the, the only thing that made me notice them was there's some crows dive bombing him and drove him off. And so I saw crows. <laughs> Although the, funnily enough, the crows weren't making any noise. It was just a lot of rustling in the trees as the crows were going for the hawk. And then I saw more hummingbirds, but I don't I don't know. I never pay too much attention to hummingbirds unless they're really close. So I don't usually bother identifying them other than going, yep, that's a hummingbird. I usually hear them a lot, you know. Mm. Zoom, zoom, you know, when they're doing their little whatever dances. Territorial or whatever. And I think that's all I've seen. Which is a lot. Better than some weeks when I'm like, I haven't seen a thing. So it's been nice getting out into the garden. I get to see a lot more wildlife. Oh, and pill bugs. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh my gosh. That garden has a sow bug problem. They're everywhere. I have never seen so many pill bugs in my life. I finally stopped being worried about stepping on them because they were just so many. I couldn't get anywhere unless I just walked. I mean, because normally I hate stepping on anybody, no matter what it is. Mm-hmm. I just feel bad. Mm-hmm. But I finally, it's like, I have to go places, guys. But that's it for my eyes fly for this week. Next is ear party, I think. Walks in the urban wilderness. Okay, we'll go is for that. Is ear party at the end or is walks first? No, I don't you're think... right. It's ear yeah. party. I think it's ear party. Well, whatever you want to do, you pick one. Ear party, what? go. Okay. Uh, what have I been listening to? Let me look at my notes. Billie Holiday. I've been listening to a bunch of her stuff. I've been really in the mood for old jazz blues. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my favorites is uh, Pennies from Heaven. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Mm-mm. I'll link to it. It's a really um, good song. Okay. Kind of uplifting. You know, it talks about, like, if you want flowers and stuff, you have to have rain, you know, which is, has the blues connotations of, you know, good things come out of bad things. Mm-hmm. And then what else of it? Uh, Ma Rainey. She's the... Uh, I came across Ma Rainey a long time ago when I think it was in high school. And uh, I haven't listened to any of her stuff since then. So it was kind of nice to reconnect with something I used to listen to and then kind of forgot all about, really. <laughs> so, But, you know, that kind of era of, of musicians is what I've been really digging lately. And I've been trying to press this button this whole time. And this flannel is so thick I can barely get the button back in. It's all warped and juicy. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> yeah, I have no hand strength. This is I need a hammer to have to break things in. But it's good enough. Anyway. Totally tangenting. So that's it for my ear party for this week. I'll link to both of those. Oh, I find it's not 
a rambunctious party in the ear party thread anymore. I finally posted something in there. I saw Only one thing. Oh. oh my gosh! And somebody so. else was in there because it wasn't just me who clicked like. Oh yay! yay! Thanks. For... <laughs> <laughs> so silly. What about you? Do you have anything for ear party this week? You know, I did. I can't remember what it was. We need a remember party before we have because the ear party. Because I'm lazy, I didn't write it down. Yeah, that's the problem. I've been, I started bookmarking things just so that I can remember by the time it comes time to podcast. I could be digging a song on Monday and then it comes like Thursday and I'm like, I have no idea what I was just listening to two days ago. Yeah. Was it something classical, perhaps? No. Was it jazzical? No. Was it popsicle? <laughs> I can't remember. That's all right. I'll talk about it next. I'll post it in the ear party thread. Yay! Yay! <laughs> if you remember it, then. <laughs> in Ravelry. I'll post something in there. Yeah. So let's see. So I guess that's it for your party. What else do we got? Oh, walks in the urban wilderness. Yes. Yes. How are you doing? I got my walks in, and I was like so happy. Oh well, we're podcasting two days early, so yeah, I'm gonna use that as my excuse for why I haven't gotten my yoga in. Uh, honestly, I think I just kind of like forgot about the yoga again. But I walked like all over. God's creation on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, you because tell. Because I was walking everywhere. Um, and I also walked. Um, I had my last uh, cooking class on Friday. Mm -hmm. So I walked to that. Oh, I remembered that. I was like, I know I did another big walk. I walked to work on Friday. Oh, okay. So that was a half an hour there and a half an hour home. Good. And it's not that long of a walk. Uh, it's mostly residential. There's a couple of parts that are a little bit busier, but it's mostly residential. So it's a pretty nice walk. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was nice to, because the entire walk is stuff that I have driven by before. But mm -hmm. I saw a lot of different things walking, you know, that you'd miss when you're in your car. Right. Like the biggest rubber tree I have ever seen in my life. It was ginormous. And wow. I was like, I know that's a rubber tree. Because Heather had a rubber tree in her backyard. And she's like, my my rubber tree looks so sad today. And that's <laughs> how I learned what a rubber tree looks like. That's so funny that you remember it that way. Well, it did look pretty sad. So, uh, what about you? How have you been doing with your exercising? So far this week, I've already got in four, so it's looking good. Cool. And, um, these, I volunteer once a week at the garden now, and that's such a good workout. Good lord. I forgot, like, how intense that is. Like, even something simple, like deadheading, can be very arduous. And I, because I'm one of the youngest people there, I'm also, like, hopping over hedges and stuff to get to some of the places that other people can't get. Um, so it's even more of a workout for me. Mm -hmm. But, um, like, today I was, like, up in bushes, like, this high, like, oh, you know. <laughs> oh, and then I'm always worn out by the end of it, which is good, you know. I need to get back into shape, which is this part of the whole impetus for the walks in the urban wilderness thing, so. Um. Yeah, so I have glad. a uh, bird of paradise in my backyard, and I'm renting my place right now. So this mm -hmm. is not my bird of paradise. It's just something that I found, and poor thing. Um, at some point, like, people had cut off, like, the dead things, but they didn't go down very far, so there were, like, all these dead stalks. Right. So I can't remember which day of my weekend, but one of the days of the weekend, I went in there with some clippers and clipped down as far as I could go 
And some of the pieces just came right out, you know, so it's like, well, I can just take that out. Yeah. But I tried not to yank, you know, because that's not good. And uh, just the ones that didn't really want to come out all the way, I just left and clipped them down lower. Mm Mm-hmm. But it looks much better now, and I am hoping it will make me lots more Bird of Paradises. It has two flowers on it so far. Um, So it's... And one of them has started to bloom, and one of them is still in its little bud. So okay. that'll be nice. You can always try to fertilize it, too, if you really want it to flower. Get one of the um, uh, fertilizers for fl- for forcing flowers. Yeah. Uh, I have a general kind of all-purpose fertilizer. So I might that, just... That has some of it. It's just that um, the mixture is different when you're trying to get, like, leaves versus... Uh, Blooms. Yeah, that's why I got the all-purpose, and that way I don't have to think about it. Yeah. So. And it's really just because, like, I don't fertilize that often, you know, and... Yeah. So. Uh, Finally getting around to getting your earrings put together. So hopefully yeah. they'll be done by next week's podcast. <laughs> Are we on to random remnants? Yeah. Okay. My life's random. Yeah. So, I wanted to tell you this story, and one day I will stop saying so. It annoys me that I say it so much. Anyway. You're so funny. Today, I taught uh, my first grade students. We're working on loud and soft. Right. And uh, with piano and forte. I've taught them the words, but... They don't quite get that piano means soft. They think it means the instrument. Right. So we're still learning. And one of the things that I did today, I start, like, I have my iPad is connected to the TV in my room, so it will show what's on my iPad. Mm -hmm. And I have an app that lets me um, draw, and it's kind of like makes my iPad into a whiteboard. Right. Right. And I had started already with, like, the screen saying forte on one side and piano on the other and a line down the middle. And I'd already uploaded a couple of images. Like, I put a baby under piano and a library and a harp. And then on the other side, I put, like, airplane and a fire truck and a drum line, you know, for forte things. So already get them started on kind of some examples. And then I had them contribute. And because... I have the internet right there. I just went into Google image search real quick and like whatever example they had, I typed it in and then got a picture from it and put it on. And so I call on one of these, one kid and he's going to give an example for Forte. And I say, okay, so what's your example for Forte? And he immediately goes, monster trucks. (laughs) And I was like, that's awesome. It is so loud. Like it's perfect. Yeah. So it's just I wanted to share that. With yeah, you. that's pretty cute. That's and like I totally the Google the monster trucks, and the first one that comes up has like a Batman symbol on the side, and so then they're all excited because it's Batman. So then I sing the theme, and it gets them quiet. I go da 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 da, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> so they stop going because they see something like that, then they can easily like go Meow, right and turn into like not doing anything productive. So. Right. But anyway, I just wanted to share that. I That's it was pretty cute. cute. Um, let's see. For my random stuff, I know I have some specific... Oh, um, you asked me to talk about these last week, and then I totally forgot. Um, so I went to the junkyard, the car junkyard, because we were looking for a part for my friend's car. Um, and I found some CDs in someone's CD uh, player in their car. And these are cars that are like... Missing a lot of parts, because, you know, you can go in, you take an alternator or whatever, so things are missing, there's, it's a mess there, if you've ever been to something like that, um, so I was surprised that these worked. I've gotten one to work, I haven't cleaned the other one yet, um, but it's totally random music, this one, Saigon, Top Hits, this guy, he's like, uh, jazzy stuff, I put him in and played him, what does it say, the best of fun? Quan Hung Tu. Muan. I can't even pronounce any of this. Sorry, guys. If you can read it, 
Let's see if I can get it close enough. You can actually see what it is. Because there's no way I can type yes. this in. I have no idea. This is one language I don't actually... I'm not able to um, translate. This guy, I don't think, is going to be in there. You can see uh, the top, but not the other one. Yeah. Anyway, that was totally fun, finding those. Yeah. In some poor old busted out car. I feel kind of bad, like... I, I wonder about the history of the car. Like, did you forget your CDs? Did they impound your car? Kind of sad thinking about that kind of stuff. But, but now I have CDs. Yay! Yay! Free. And a free little Lotus pin that I found in the same car. There we go. Pretty. Yeah, I was like, oh, you had a lot of stuff in your car, guy. Including some tax documents. I felt kind of bad. Ooh. Yeah, oh well. But that was an exciting adventure. And then, did I show you, I wanted to show you this, and did I show you this button that I made? No. So I, I saw, I think, I can't remember if this is a real button. I think it is. But they had the, hello, my name is, with the Ravelry symbol on them. So I was like, I don't want to buy that. I could make that if I had a button maker, but I don't. So one day when I was bored at work, this is back when I still had a job, um, I took a button from a program that was no, that was you know defunct. We had a, we still had the buttons lying around, and I just pried off the back of it, and printed out my own label and made, "Hello, my name is Tiny Kiwi" with a little Ravelry symbol at the bottom. So I keep that on my um, project bag sometimes, depending on where I'm going. That's awesome. Yeah. And then I just popped the plastic and the whole thing back together. I mean, and I did this all with just stuff I could find at work. So it's all just office tools and stuff. So a fun way to repurpose a button. It's not like 100% perfect. The plastic didn't go in as um, tightly as you would if you had a real button machine. Yeah. But I was like, hey, this button was all for the bin anyway. Might as well repurpose it. So I had a fun time with that. Cool. And now I have a button so people can find me if I'm ever at a convention or something. Yeah, like if I ever go to Stitches or something. We gotta make that happen sometime. We gotta go to one of them at least. At some point, I know, and it's always like, oh, here it comes, and every all the classes are full, and all the things that I would have liked to take are filled up, and oh well, too far away. Pretty because, much. Like it would be really fun to just go to the marketplace, but it is too far to just go shopping for yarn. Yeah. So I want to take classes, you know, if I ever go, and yeah. I agree with that. I also wanted to show you this thing. I don't think you ever saw this. I'm just this is just like show and tell for um Ramp Anxious Guy here. So let me hold it up. Can you see what it is? Kiwi! Yes. So back when I was in metalsmithing class we were trying out laser cutting. So this was a sample of just to figure out what we could get away with with laser cutting. This is a sheet of acrylic. Um and then this piece, I don't know if you'll be able to see, because it's cardboard, I was the see. backing piece that they put behind the sheet of acrylic, because they were cutting all of our projects at once. So I got, got uh, two projects for the price of one. Um, the one thing we learned, though, was that um, the acrylic would melt back together, especially in small spots like his beak. So he's actually not a separate piece like we had hoped. Because we were going to use this for other um, projects and stuff in class. You know, sort of multimedia. Um, so while he's super cute, I have no idea what I'm going to do with him now. But I came across him while I was looking for some the needle files. <laughs> but i got to really think of something to do. Or maybe just throw him away, I guess. Because he's just a sheet of acrylic. But he's so cute. If somebody has suggested making goggles with them. But I only yeah. have one. A monocle, maybe. Monocle? Yeah, that's not a bad idea. It's kind of big for that. Yeah. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I might be able to cut cut him down on the outside, though. Although I... Filing acrylics not up there on my favorite things to do. Mm, no. No. But well, I think... That's it for my hand. Yeah, I think we're all done with our random... So we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Take four.
Hello and welcome! Do I say that, or do you say that? Oh, sweet Jesus, you've glitched out completely. I'm making sock, 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 sock. I'm making sock, 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 sock. I'm making sock. I'm making sock. I'm making sock, 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 sock. 